What's going on everyone? It's been a while, but I'm back and I couldn't be more excited, ready to talk relevant NFL football news again. And just in the nick of time with the start of free agency, just a few days into it, having allowed the dust to settle, see how some of these deals have gone down, and just kind of give you guys my thoughts on this. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. And I'm going to do that by giving you guys my list of top 10 free agency winners so far. So let's get right into it. Kicking things off with the team that I think has won this young free agency period so far, I gotta go with the Chicago Bears and all the moves they've made to help surround Mitch Trubisky with talent offensively and on top of that retaining a lot of their defensive playmakers. So highlighting the list here, we have got Allen Robinson being added and to me that's a perfect fit for the Bears. I personally thought he was the best available free agent wide receiver in this market and I know a debate could be had between him and Sammy Watkins but the reason I like Robinson better is as far as age goes both these guys are 24 so that's a wash but in terms of injuries uh, I realize Robinson is coming off the ACL but with Sammy Watkins the guy's pretty much been injury riddled since he entered this league and hasn't really been able to play an entire full length season 100% healthy. For that reason, I do think Robinson is more of a consistent guy moving forward. Uh, at least that's how I view him. And while Sammy Watkins might have more of that wow factor, I think there are just too many question marks with him whether he can stay healthy because of, all, again, all the injuries that he has had. Um, then moving on, the Bears went ahead and added a pass-catching tight end in Trey Burden from the Eagles. And this guy, Super Bowl hero, obviously. Uh, but I think a lot of people that were watching the Eagles late saw what he could do, especially in the red zone when guys like Selleck and Ertz were not on the field. Because in those games, Burton was a touchdown machine and was that security blanket for Foles. Now, I think that's exactly what Trubisky needs, especially with Miller probably never playing football again after his devastating injury last year. So to me, Trey Burden, I really like him as an addition. A little bit pricey is what concerns me here, but the Bears had the money to spend. Now, on top of that, another receiver being added in Taylor Gabriel. And for me, another slot guy, quick speed, maybe a home run threat. And again, depending on what happens with Cameron Meredith, I really like the group. I'm assuming Kevin White probably won't be a factor. So to me, the three guys on this team become Allen Robinson, Cameron Meredith, Taylor Gabriel. Um, not a bad group, especially when you throw in Trey Burton in there as the pass catching tight end. And finally, concluding things offensively, adding a guy in Cody Parkey, low key kicker. Uh, but ever since the Bears let go of Robbie Gold, they have been struggling and losing games because of missed kicks. And Parkey adds some consistency um, throughout his last couple of years. He has been a reliable kicker. So to me, offensively, the Bears get an A plus grade. And looking at the defensive side, I got to give them an A again because they went ahead and retained their top secondary guys in Prince Mukamura and Kyle Fuller. For that reason, um, I think you got to give them again, like I said, an A and then allow them to build throughout the draft, whether it's bulking up that offensive line or adding defensive talent. So for that reason, I got to give the Bears my top grade of this free agency so far. Continuing on with my team at number two, I have got the New England Patriots and for a squad that's been in back to back Super Bowls, albeit one and two in those games, they continue to stay aggressive. Now, I realize they've lost guys like Malcolm Butler, Dion Lewis, and Nate Solder, but the good news here is they will get compensation back for two out of those three guys in the way of draft picks and likely high draft picks around the third round. Uh, so that is the bit of good news. Now, in terms of actual additions, they have added a guy in Jeremy Hill who I think is a welcome addition. For me personally, I liked him in Cincinnati, but... I think it was just way too many heads there with Giovanni Bernard, Mixon, and then just a bad offensive line in general. Uh, now, I realize he goes from one crowded backfield into another, but the Patriots historically have had success, especially in the last few years, juggling all those running backs. And if there's a group that can be successful in that, it is the Patriots. So I do think Jeremy Hill will be utilized quite well in that offense. But to me, 
the side of the football that I'm excited about for the Patriots is the defense with additions like Adrian Claiborne, Danny Sheldon, and then reuniting the McCourty twins. Now, Wood Sheldon, uh, he was a former first-round pick by the Browns, uh, traded to the Patriots. So it'll be interesting to see what he still has left in the tank, whether uh, the change of venues can kind of reignite his career. And then with Adrian Claiborne, whether he can continue the success he had in terms of sacks from last year with the Falcons. Uh, and then defensively, in the secondary, trying to maybe a little bit replace Butler with the McCourty signing. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I do think the Patriots excel in getting low-key guys and then molding them into high-profile players. So I do think, uh, for now, very good start to free agency. We'll continue to get better in the draft. And on top of that, I would say if the Patriots hadn't lost Nate Solder, to me, they would be right at the top of this list. But because of mainly that loss, i got to put them at number two. Next, at number three, I've got the LA Rams. And again, similar to the Patriots, they had their share of losses early on with guys like Trumaine Johnson, uh, Alec Ogletree, and Sammy Watkins. But to me, uh, Sammy Watkins wanted way too much money for what I think his actual value is. And Trumaine Johnson, while he is good, I think the Rams did an excellent job of replacing him. Uh, which I'll touch on more later, but as far as the two out of those three guys in Watkins and Trumaine, they will get, similar to the Patriots, compensation back for those losses. Again, similar in fashion, third round pick most likely. Um, and as far as the replacements that have come in for them, the two big guys, Marcus Peters and Aqib Tlaib. With Aqib Tlaib, he's a more seasoned guy. Uh, he kind of wore out his welcome in Denver. Obviously had a lot of success there. But I think reuniting him with Wade Phillips is going to be a really nice move. And then having Marcus Peters, a young cornerback, who has been pretty much a stud since he came into this league, just kind of had to leave because of the new culture in Kansas City. Um, there were talks about, you know, on the field issues, things like that. But I don't think that will be as big of a deal in L.A. with the Rams. They got two studs locking down the secondary there. Um, I think Tlaib still probably has another year or two left in him, so I'm not too worried about that, even at his age. Now, I don't necessarily think this will translate into the success that the Rams had last year, because I do think they will probably take a step back a little bit offensively, teams having figured them out a little bit more, tape being out there, but regardless, as far as just free agency is concerned, I really like the moves they made in the secondary. Um, I think they saved some good money by not keeping Sammy Watkins. They drafted well last year, and they have a potential to replace Sammy Watkins in the draft as well. At number four, I have got the Minnesota Vikings, and to me, a team that quite possibly made the biggest splash in free agency and had the biggest domino effect with the addition of Kirk Cousins on a three-year, fully guaranteed historic contract. Uh, obviously, they went ahead not retaining Case Keenum, instead plugging in Kirk Cousins to a squad that already had a lot of offensive talent with guys like Thielen, Diggs, Rudolph, and Cook. And to me, definitely Kirk Cousins uh, now has a lot more toys than he's ever had before. More guys that he can get the football to. That bodes well for the Vikings and for Kirk Cousins. Now, to me, what will be interesting here is the debate. Is Kirk Cousins actually an upgrade over Case Keenum? Personally, I think he is. With Case Keenum, even though he had a good year, it was one year. And honestly, if I had to pick a guy to fall back down to earth, it would be him next year. To me, the sample size just not that big. Kirk Cousins has been more consistent and done it for more years straight. For that reason, I do think he'll be successful. The big thing here is, can he limit some of those mistakes? Uh, get that red zone efficiency increased. I think that's one of the reasons that Case Keenum was so effective. And if last year taught us anything, it's that if you have an above average quarterback with weapons and a stout defense, that can get you very far, which now the Vikings, I think, definitely fall in that category. And speaking of defenses, they went ahead, added Sheldon Richardson, a stout defensive tackle. Uh, I think that'll definitely help them. And now I think the Vikings... No longer can the Packers be automatically crowned champions of the NFC North with a healthy Aaron Rodgers. 
Vikings have to be taken seriously. I think they've made steps in the right direction and are a serious threat in the NFC. At number 5, I have got the Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles and maybe a little bit too high, but honestly, I'm just so impressed with what they have done with a limited amount of resources in terms of cap space. Starting off, for example, with a guy like Torrey Smith, who was probably going to get cut already pretty old, uh, nothing more than a wide receiver three in my opinion, just a speed guy. They're able to deal him to the Carolina Panthers in exchange for a young cornerback in Daryl Worley. He'll get tested out, see what he's got in the tank, whether he's a viable option or not, and then additionally staying relevant with some of their defensive additions. Already a strength, now getting even more depth there and preparing in case, you know, some guys have to leave. So adding a guy like Michael Bennett with the disbansion of the Legion of Boom, and then also a guy in Lodi Nada who is just an absolute clog in the middle of that defense. Now, just on those moves alone, I have the Philadelphia Eagles at the middle of my list, but a big domino here could potentially be what happens with the quarterback situation in Philly. Does Nick Foles get moved? Does he stay? Um, that'll be very interesting to continue to monitor because if he gets moved, they could get a lot in return. Moving on at number 6, I've got the Green Bay Packers, and I know there's a lot of differing opinions here, especially with the recent release of Jordy Nelson, but I'll touch more on that later. For now, looking at the big offensive addition in Jimmy Graham, uh, and I think this will be a great move for the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, and Jimmy Graham. Looking back at the days when they were very potent offensively, um, you look at the guy in Jermichael Finley that was there, good pass-catching tight end, had size, red zone threat, definitely all things that Jimmy Graham is and potentially could do better. Now I will say Jimmy Graham hasn't had the success that he once had in New Orleans, especially in terms of yardage uh, when he went to Seattle. Uh, he was still a red zone threat, efficient in terms of touchdowns, but some of the lacking areas I will attribute to the recent decline of Seattle, the issues they had on the offensive line, uh, and generally misusing Jimmy Graham. Uh, now, I do think the Packers will do a much better job, so I think Jimmy Graham rebounds this year and has another monster season. Now, on the defensive side of the football, one big addition, Muhammad Wilkerson um, being added to that defensive line. I like that move, but the reason I have the Packers at number six is I would have liked to see more moves on the defense for a group that struggled so mightily last year and could be taken advantage of. It'll be interesting to see what they do in the draft definitely think they'll hit that side of the football. Now as far as Jordy Nelson here, the big question is whether, you know, was it the right move to release him? A guy at his age, uh, the cap hit that was associated with him if they kept him uh, compared to a guy like Randall Cobb who was much younger uh, and with Jordy Nelson never quite being the same after that ACL injury, um, I have to go on the side of the Green Bay Packers. I support the move. As much as I like Jordy Nelson, I think it was the right move. I think they'll still have plenty of offensive pieces. And, you know, this will be a great way to see whether uh, all that talk, if Jordy Nelson was really a premier wide receiver or if he was just a guy that was made relevant because he was in the system with Aaron Rodgers. Those questions will be answered. Personally, I think he'll have a good year. Just, unfortunately, will not be in Green Bay. At number 7, I have got the Jacksonville Jaguars, and with this team, the two big names will be Blake Bortles and Allen Robinson. Obviously, Robinson leaving, uh, you know, it is a hit, but keep in mind, the success the Jaguars had going all the way to the AFC Championship game, they did pretty much from the get-go without Robinson since his injury was so early on. Um, so that key offensive unit is still there. Now my big question more than anything it was, what are they going to do with Blake Bortles? Are they going to bring him back? Are they going to try and find a replacement? While our question has been answered for a while, they're sticking with Blake Bortles. And what do they do in order to show us that they are confident in that they go ahead and surround him with more talent offensively? Now I do think, I will preface this, you can only go as far as your quarterback can take you. Um, but. Regardless, they're giving him weapons, adding Andrew Norwell from the Panthers um, on that offensive line. Again, not only going to protect Blake Bortles, give him more time, 
but also help open up more lanes for Leonard Fournette and help him avoid that sophomore slump. Then, uh, in terms of pass catchers, adding Moncrief, adding Austin Safarius Jenkins, they needed to upgrade that tight end position, got younger, got more athletic there, and with Moncrief, uh, bring some veteran leadership. If healthy, I like the impact he can make, but again, for the Jaguars, it'll be on the shoulders of Blake Bortles, and a lot of their success will depend on him as long as that defense does not take a step back. Getting to number 8, we have got the Cleveland Browns, and probably the team that made the biggest splash prior to the actual start of NFL free agency via trades and getting guys like Tyrod Taylor, Jarvis Landry, and Demarius Randall. Now, the big highlight here is obviously Jarvis Landry, and I do like the one-two punch now with Landry and Josh Gordon. Uh, the big question to me was, what are they going to do at the quarterback position? I would have loved for them to go hard at Kirk Cousins. That would have been something, an immediate offensive overhaul. But instead, they get a guy in Tyrod Taylor, who personally I think is going to be nothing more than a bridge guy. So I'd say you can probably add him to the infamous list of quarterback names on the Browns jersey because he won't stick around for more than one season. Uh, the Browns will take a quarterback number one, I believe. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there and whether he pans out. Now, another name that I do like here being added is Carlos Hyde. Um, I didn't like all the moves in terms of the swap between Isaiah Crowell, Duke Johnson for the last couple of years. I didn't think Crowell was the guy. I do like Hyde. I think he just wore out his welcome in San Francisco. So a new place. Uh, they got him, I think, for pretty cheap. Also, they tried to make some moves on the offensive line. So definitely Cleveland Browns headed in the right directions. The reason I have them at 8 is I would have liked to see them get more aggressive with Kirk Cousins. But here, the big thing will be what they do in the draft. Like I said before, if they can hit on a quarterback, this could very well lead the Browns to being relevant once again. At number 9, I have got the Tennessee Titans. And the reason I have them a little bit lower on this list is because they were somewhat limited with what they could go out and do following the Malcolm Butler edition. Big contract, so afterwards they were a little bit handicapped. They were still able to get a guy also like Deion Lewis after letting DeMarco Murray go, who I personally think was on the decline of his career. Even when he got his opportunities, he somewhat struggled last year. So I think that was the right move. Would have loved to see Derrick Henry in that feature role. Now I think he'll have that 1A role, Lewis will have the 1B role, so that'll be interesting to keep an eye out on. Also Josh Klein re-signing, a little bit of money went into that investment, keeping continuity in the offensive line. I like that, uh, but again, the big deciding factor here on the success will be how does Malcolm Butler pan out? Does he play up to the standards of his deal and put all that talks of being set in the Super Bowl behind him? And finally, at number 10, I have got the New York Giants, and on paper, they address positions of need highlighted by Nate Solder. Now, obviously, probably overpaid Solder a little bit, but to an offensive line that has been abysmal for several years, they are trying to add stability. It'll continue to get revamped, but Nate Solder, a piece in the right direction, hopefully he'll be able to anchor part of that offensive line um, a little bit on the older side, but again, fingers crossed for the sake of the Giants. Then Alec Ogletree, an athletic linebacker, I like him being added. And as far as another big name, Jonathan Stewart uh, being added in that running back backfield. Personally, I don't think he is the solution. I think the Giants should still continue to look for other guys because Stewart, he is on the older side of running backs and he has been on the decline for a while. Um, he has had lingering issues back when he was in Carolina, and to me, I predict he'll probably finish with 500 or 600 yards of total uh, rushing. So hopefully the Giants continue to bolster that position, and it'll be very interesting to see what they do with their early round pick in the NFL draft. And with that, we get to the end of this list of free agent winners. So let me know what you guys thought. Did you agree with the teams that were listed? Uh, with the impact guys that were talked about and let me know if you think I missed anyone or if you disagree with my order I'll be coming back with a few couple of different lists in free agency so if you guys have any other ideas I'd love to hear them 
Uh, as far as future videos, I will be putting those out as well, especially with free agency continuing and with the draft also approaching. So as always, if you enjoyed, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in future videos.